So anytime Martin Scorsese has a brand new movie coming out in theaters, it instantly becomes one of my most anticipated for the years. Not just because it's Martin Scorsese, but it's because, well, that man is my favorite director of all time, and I think I could even make an argument is the best living director of all time as well. This guy had just like 90% of his filmography is like instant classic movies that aren't just studied in like film school or film classes. They're just movies that people absolutely love. And like the last like five movies he's made, I've looked at them and been like, he's just going through and doing like all these major passion projects of his. Just continues to nail it in every sort of instance. And Killers of the Flower Moon is all of that and more. This is a true pinnacle achievement in his filmography. It's going to be a film that I can see so many people studying for years to come, and not just like in film, but also in like history classes. When this these stories, the reign of terror needs to be talked about, this is the film that will be used to dissect that all. And also, it's just another masterpiece in Martin Scorsese's filmography. I I I came out of this movie speechless flabbergasted and honestly pretty emotional and i wasn't expecting to get emotional watching this movie but he does so many incredible things throughout this film respectful and delicate retelling of the osage murders but he does it in a way that again just brings you in and makes you feel like you lived in this time this movie sucks you in and does not let you go and i have a lot to talk about with killers of the flower moon today so if you are new here make sure to hit that like subscribe button please share your thoughts on this movie are you excited to see it this weekend in theaters are you gonna just wait for apple tv streaming service i really cannot implore you to go and check this movie out in theaters again if you guys all went and saw oppenheimer there is no reason for you guys not to go see killers of the flower moon but if you don't know what this is about well my crime junkie fans you should absolutely jump on board because this is set in 1920s oklahoma that depicts the serial murder of members of the oil wealthy osage nation a string of brutal crimes that came to be known as the reign of terror once again it's directed and written by martin scorsese and also written by eric roth and it stars the likes of leonardo dicaprio robert de niro classic two people who show up in almost every single scorsese film Jesse Plemons and the one and only Lily Gladstone now you might have never heard that name before this is my first experience with her ah if the Oscars were tomorrow she would win best actress just saying right now i absolutely do have a lot to say about this movie and i really don't know where to start with it because with the scorsese film there's so much that you can absolutely dive in and jump in and have such a big smile on your face with and at the same time you never know how you're going to leave one of his movies because he can easily leave you with like a very haunting feeling or just a feeling of like a smirk on your face but he what he infuses so well in this movie and what i've really noticed is that a lot of people, when you hear Martin Scorsese, they instantly think of like Goodfellas or Casino or Mean Streets, and they think of gangster movies. And while he's very much known for that, I think what we forget is that he's a very delicate filmmaker that can tell a very quiet story. And this movie, in a way, infuses every subgenre that he's ever told and brings them all together into a Western setting and tells a true crime American story that not many people talk about. And for him to be able to tell a story like this in a delicate and respectable way like I mentioned, because if you look up all the behind the scenes stuff and like what the original idea was for this movie compared to what you actually get, it almost makes that original idea not even look great. In fact, it looks very generic in the way that he would have told that original story. But to focus in on the Osage tribe, and less 
on the creation of the FBI with J. Edgar Hoover, I think is one of the most poignant and most smart ways to tell a story like this. Because you very much come into the culture of the Osage tribe, into the Native Americans, how they were infused into American culture, but also you see the power, greed, and corruption that many Americans had against them. And I just, you know, when you leave a movie and you feel speechless and flabbergasted that, like, you just saw something so incredible that, like, in 20 to 30 years, your kids might be the, being like, have you seen this movie? And you'll be like, yeah, that movie's incredible. This is kind of one of those movies. And I just, like, every little moment of this film is not wasted. And the runtime has been talked about, like, up to no end. That it, three and a half hour, almost three and a half hours, three hours and 26 minutes, that's long. It is, it is long. But not one single frame, moment, or story beat is missed. It's not ever just felt wasted. There's no filler, no padding. Every single moment, every single act is used in a way to truly tell this story. To develop these characters, to develop the relationship. And the editing of this movie is actually really powerful in the usage of certain frames and certain shots. But also in the way that it will tell a cohesive story jumping around from different timelines sometimes. Not, not a lot, not like Oppenheimer type stuff, but it'll jump like a couple years instantly. But you never feel lost in what the story is being told, what's happening it just continues to move to where i checked my phone because i wanted to see what time it was and i noticed there was like 30 minutes left of the film and i was flabbergasted that there was only 30 minutes left because it, it just felt like an hour and a half it flew by and i love that feeling and i love that martin scorsese can make a movie flow so smoothly no matter how haunting, no matter how dark, no matter how deceptive it can get, he just makes his movies flow. And that comes from a true visionary as a director, working with your editor, working with your scriptwriter, all those sorts of things. So everyone needs to be acclaimed on that. But also the thing I, I do want to acclaim as well is some of the cinematography shots in here. This, this movie really makes you feel and takes you into 1920s Oklahoma. Like, from the opening few scenes to the way that it just kind of arrives, like, on this train, and these overhead shots and this this beautiful open range and landscape to this small western town, you feel like you were actually there. Transported to these areas... And to small little shots as well where, you know, one character you can easily tell is not a great person. But the way that he, like, tells these stories, and maybe this isn't, like, what he intended to do, but, like, reflections in the glasses can tell a story. Like, there's these little things that Scorsese does in here that just puts a smile on your face watching a master cook in the kitchen and craft something so special. And what he actually really gets out of here that I personally found to be one of the best aspects of the movie is the performances. Now, you know Leonardo DiCaprio is going to be fantastic in here. Like, like that guy is just, again, delivered one of my favorite performances of all time in The Wolf of Wall Street. But for me, the guy is always phenomenal, always incredible. And in here, he plays a very subdued, character that feels different than anything else he's ever played before and the more i sit on his performance and the nuances that he kind of gave to it i'm actually kind of shocked by how different of a character he plays in here and specifically the turns and twists that he, his character comes into and i think there's gonna be a lot of discussion around that but i think the two performances actually that do need to be talked about the most is robert de niro who honestly I think turns in his best performance in decades. And when I mean decades, I mean like 20, 30 years plus. Like this is one of his best performances of his entire career. Top two, top three. Like 
I where's this De Niro been for the last decade? Like, wow. I, I mean, he was great in The Irishman. Don't get me wrong, but he is like completely different in here, like almost unrecognizable. And Lily Gladstone, an actress that I've never seen in anything before, should win Best Actress. And I have not seen every, you know, big film that's probably going to be nominated for an Oscar, and maybe I'll change my tude. Uh, I've been pretty, like, excited for poor things as well with Emma Stone. I, I just don't know how you beat Lily Gladstone's performance in here. Like, the fact that she can tell an entire story without moving a single muscle and just move her eyes exactly what she is feeling when she moves her eyes one way to the other way it's all these little things to her dialect to her performance and again there is not one weak part in here this is a performance that people should study because i've always said that you can be bombastic you can be loud you can give all those sorts of things but the true performances can really come from your eyes and some of your facial muscles. Her performance in here is just absolutely devastating. And that devastating performance is just something that really makes this movie work in every sort of way. And her and DiCaprio just are incredible together and this chemistry this performance this relationship that they have within this movie is heartbreaking especially when you start to really piece together what is going on all these deceptive themes of power greed corruption all these ideas and as dark as we've seen scorsese go before this might be one of his darkest thematical films yet on how far characters will go for greed and power and how that can change someone. And all of these performances are the reason that it works. And it's not, and it's not just them. Like, don't get me wrong. When it comes down to the likes of like Jesse Plemons, who really comes into the back half of this, is fantastic. John Lithgow is great. Brendan Fraser is great when he's in it. Jillian Dion, William Below, Cara Jade Myers, Tatoon Cardinal, Janae Collins. It continues. Every single performance nails the entire film brings this story that was crafted so delicately to life and shows you pieces of culture that three hour and 26 minute runtime is there to not just develop the characters not just develop the relationships but to span over time to make you feel those devastating hits when someone's murdered and when you see a character that obviously cared about that person and how devastated they feel, you can't even only imagine what they are going through. And it just continues. It just moves along. Dissecting a story that I never felt like I was missing something. I understood the culture. I understood the tribe. I understood this town. I understood how some of these characters actually felt about other people, even if it was never despicably said. And you can always feel, like in DiCaprio's performance alone, like without getting into spoilers, just this hesitation for everything. And how he wants to prove something and to so many different people. It, it's all of those smaller details that just perfection to say the least. And also the thing that really plays along with it as well is the score. The score is very, very memorable. I loved the low beat of it all. And I love that Scorsese made a lot of choices to also not have a lot of scenes with the score, to let you live in that pure silence. No pun intended because he made the film silence, but truly enough, like that's those silent moments bring a lot of not levity, 
the pain and let you really agonize with that. And speaking of agonizing and speaking of pain, the movie itself has probably one of the best endings in Scorsese's entire filmography. And to have a year where we had Past Lives, Oppenheimer, which have two of the best endings of this entire year as well, and probably just of the last couple of years, the way this movie ended put a lump in my throat. The second the movie ended, it made me want to get up with the chills down my back, with the lump in my throat, walk out, give my reaction to the to the reps, and get in my car and just sit there and detox from the experience I had. Because the last five minutes is unlike anything I've seen in any true crime or just true story biopics. Most movies, when it ends with a true story, it tells you where every single person went and what they ended up doing in the future. Not this one. The way that it depicts and tells the rest of the story, and that's as much as I'm going to get without getting into spoilers, will be talked about for years. Like, the ending of this movie will be talked about for years. It was incredible. It was amazing. It really made me super emotional to see where it ended up going. And that was not what I expected to get out of this one. I didn't know how this movie was going to end. But like that final 10 minute, 5 to 10 minute block. Again, just goes to show how incredible Scorsese is. And I think a lot of people are going to walk away just blown away by that ending. And honestly leave the theater probably speechless. Because it's one of those endings that you consistently think about perfect speechless honestly this is just one of those movies that is a staggering achievement that will make your stomach feel uneasy and leave you in pain from every powerful scene to the next there's so many sequences in here that will live inside my head for the rest of the year and when i think back to scorsese this will be one of those films that i'm like yeah he made that. Why Killers of the Flower Moon showcases why Scorsese is the best director to ever live. Delicately crafted to retell the tragic Osage mer murders by giving a glimpse into what greed, power, and corruption brings. It's a cinematic masterpiece that will be studied for years to come and left me speechless. Give Lily Gladstone every single award. Remember that Robert De Niro just turns in probably his best performance in decades and probably one of his best performances of his entire career. And Leonardo DiCaprio is always phenomenal, but the more I sit on his performance, the more blown away I am by his nuances in here. The ending, though, will be talked about for decades. I think it is powerful, it's thought-provoking, and it was not what I expected. Killers of the Flower Moon is one of the best films of this year. If you get the chance to go see this in theaters, you absolutely should. I'm going to do my best to go to see it at least one more time in theaters before it hits on streaming services on Apple TV. So with all that said, I'm going to give this movie an A+. Thank you so much again, guys, for watching this. You guys are really all the best. I cannot wait to hear your guys' thoughts. I am going to be trying to do a top 10 video later this week for Martin Scorsese's movies. There's so many that I've been trying to clamor through. I was going to do a ranking, but... That just didn't seem fair for him thus far. So thank you so much again for watching this. And of course, until next time, stay classy.